Hello and welcome to my YouTube video. My name is Suzanne Bryan and in this video I'm going to demonstrate a technique called Ladder Back Jacquard. Ladder Back Jacquard is a technique of working a large color block area without catching floats behind the work like you would in standard stranded knitting over a long span of stitches. This is five, six, seven, eight. 12 stitches wide in standard stranded knitting you would not work a solid 12 stitches in one color and strand the other color behind because you would end up with a really large float on the back of the work. So your options are to catch the float as you work across or use this technique called ladder back jacquard. Ladder back jacquard can be used in conjunction with stranded knitting. They can be interchanged back and forth. So here are some examples, some little swatches. This is a pocket top, a swatch for a pocket top that I started to see how it would work. And I wanted to have a stranded motif right in the middle of the pocket with solid yellow around the outside. And I didn't want to really catch the red behind the yellow because most likely it would show through. So I used this technique called ladder back jacquard. And that's where you create a second layer of fabric. It's similar to double knitting, very similar to double knitting where you have a second layer of fabric behind the first and you just pull the first the red color through as you need it. The rest of the time it is independent of the front fabric. Now in standard double knitting you have one back stitch for each front stitch. In jacquard you do not. You just have one every five or six stitches or however often you want to place them depending on the size of the yarn that you're working with. This is fingering weight yarn and I'm probably getting seven stitches to the inch so I want to catch the red yarn fewer than seven stitches. I want it less than an inch because you don't want your finger to be able to go under the floats. If they're too long, you're, you'll catch them on your fingers. So this is ladder back check card worked flat. This is the same technique on this little mitt with this design here worked in the round. And that we're going to work this mitt in this video. I'm going to show you how to do the jacquard on this mitt. Now, first of all, here's this little design. You have to decide how often do you want to create that double knit or ladder back to card stitch across the back of the work. And this designer, this is in conjunction with the New Horizon hat by Ron Warren. It's a hat pattern where he's used this design and I'm making this video to teach the technique for his hat. He has decided where you're going to make those jacquard, ladder back to card stitches additional stitches on the back of the work for you. So all you have to do is follow this little chart, which is what I'm going to do in this video. So here we go. We're going to learn how to do ladder back jacquard. Enough introduction. Okay, so I've got my work going here. I've got the wrist portion done of the fingerless mitt and I'm ready to start this design here. At the same time, I'll be making my thumb gusset over here. That's these stitches over here. So I've marked where the chart is going to fit in the top of the mitt. This is the marker and that's where this gray line is here. That designates the placement of this marker. The You can see the um, setup for the ladder back to card stitches. This is where the orange will be carried behind the yellow, where the yellow be, will be carried behind the orange. And I'm also setting them up around the rest of the mitt. This is just for the chart. So we have to have the orange set up behind the yellow around the rest of the circumference of the mitt. And I'll be placing one of those in this area right here. So we're going to start row 28 or round 28 now, which is the round where we're going to set up the jacquard stitches. So here we go. I'm going to be using the orange yarn in my left hand because I consider that the dominant color for this design and the yellow yarn in my right hand. And let me increase the video here. Okay, so we're going to move work over to the position of the first jacquard of the first 
Jacquard set up stitch. This is very similar. The spacing is similar to uh, catching floats for stranded knitting. You don't really want to allow more than an inch of a float because fingers can get stuck in that. So we're going to make our first jacquard setup stitch here. We're going to use a lifted increase. So this is the stitch on the left needle. This is the stitch but just below it. We're going to lift that up, the right leg of that stitch up onto the left needle. We're going to bring the yellow yarn to the front. This is super important. Yellow yarn to the front. Knit into that leg with the orange. Yellow yarn to the back. And knit the stitch. Now we're starting our little chart. Right here. Column 2. So we've got to work four yellows. And then we're going to be making another orange jacquard setup stitch. So we're just going to knit four yellow. And when you're holding that orange across the back, it is stranding. It's going to be a strand across the back. You don't want to pull it tight. You don't want it up like this because then you'll have a puckered design. You want to allow space between the stitches. Now we're going to make another card set up stitch. We're going to lift that right leg up onto the left needle. We're going to bring the yellow yarn forward between the needles. Knit the leg. Knit through the leg. Just take the leg off. Yellow yarn to the back. Knit the next stitch. So we just made this set up stitch. Now we're going to work one yellow and four oranges. Again, allows the stitches to spread out on this needle. You don't want them too tight together or you'll end up with a puckered design. You don't want it puckered. Now we're going to make a yellow jacquard setup stitch. So we're going to do a left lifted, I mean a right lifted increase again. We're going to bring the orange yarn to the front. We're going to knit this with the yellow, allowing this strand across here. Don't pull it tight. Take the orange to the back, and then we're going to knit two more orange stitches. So now we've made, and you can see these, they stand out. See, we've made an orange stitch here. This is a jacquard stitch and a yellow jacquard stitch. So we did this orange one and the yellow one. And I'm just going to continue around the round, and we'll come back. I'll meet you right back here, and you'll see how we're going to follow up on the next round. Okay, so I'm ready to start the second round, or round 29 on this chart. You can see I've got the little leaf started here on the front of the fabric. You can also see from the wrong side, this is uh, the back of the mitt, which will be all yellow. But you can see where I've created those ladder back jacquard base stitches across the back to catch the yarn, yarn, orange yarn as it'll float all the way across the back. So you can see the catches on the front. This is not stranded knitting, it's ladder back jacquard. And it goes well with stranded knitting. You can use both of them together. So let's get ready to start the next round. And remember I use that second needle. I pull the cable out to the side so that, see that orange stitch way over here? I don't want to pull it up tight like this because that will definitely compromise my fabric and cause it to be um, puckered. So this is the thumb gusset right here. I'm making it in a striped pattern. Now we're ready to start our yellow. So we're going to work over to that first base stitch for the ladder back jacquard. It's coming up. You can see the orange stitch. 
and you can see how it's hidden. Do you see how that orange stitch hidden between these two yellow stitches? Here's a column comes up to this stitch, the yellow. The next column comes up to this yellow. The orange is actually behind and that's where we want it. When we come to it we bring the yellow yarn forward, knit the orange, take the yellow yarn to the back and work the next stitches. So you can see how that orange stitch now is falling that column of orange stitches is going to fall directly behind the two yellow columns. So now we're ready to do, we're on our chart here, ready to do 29, we're at the line, so we're going to knit four yellows. And we can see our ladder back to card stitch here, right there, the orange. Bring the yellow forward, knit the orange, take the yellow to the back. We just made this stitch right here, right there. Now we're going to do two yellows. We're following our chart. Two, three oranges. Here's our ladder back to card stitch. So this time we're going to bring the orange to the front, orange to the front, knit the yellow, orange to the back. That's what keeps the yellow behind. And then we're going to knit four oranges. And I can't emphasize enough that to keep these stitches spread out on your needle. You do not want these floats that are running along behind to get tight. It's better to have them too loose than too tight. You can see my nice floats for the ladder back to card. So I'm going to continue around and we'll come back to round three. In fact, I'm going to do several rounds and then show you what it looks like on the inside of, and the outside of the work. Okay, you can see I'm several rounds up from where we started now. Starting to see a little bit of the design of the bottom of the leaf here. And starting to see the little thumb gusset that I'm creating for the bottom of the thumb. It's going to have this little rickrack design like down here. Here's the back. Now you see a little bit of a dimple there where we caught, but not much. And that has to do with how tight you're holding that first round of the uh, secondary color of the part that's going to create the ladder back to card. You want to keep that really loose. As I said before, I cannot emphasize how loose. It's better to have it too loose than too tight. So now you can start to see Here's our leaf design. So here's the, the yellow ladder back jacquard coming up behind the leaf. And then all the rest of this is the orange ladder back jacquard. And as we get going more, you'll see um, how it's going to look when we get up a little higher. Let's zoom in a little bit. This is why the first row needs to be really, really loose. This is the first row. You can see where we picked it up through behind this stitch and then it has to go the yarn has to go all the way up and around for the next time it's worked up there so that's a lot of yarn if it's too tight what happens is it pulls that stitch that it's going through do you see how when I pull on this it pulls it wide and it will make a big opening on the front of the fabric you need to have enough this needs to be extraordinarily loose so if you be sure to look at the inside of your work, also look and see if you're getting dimples. If the dimples are unacceptable, you're pulling it too tight. You can see a little bit of one there, maybe one there. Blocking will help, but if they're too big, blocking will not help. So I'm going to continue working on. I just wanted to show you the in progress photo so you could see how it's looking so far. And I'll be back shortly. Okay, you can see I've worked several more rounds of the fingerless mitt, the little design here. Let's take a look at this up close. The little leaf's starting to emerge. And I've got my little thumb gusset going here. So on the outside, it looks pretty good. 
You may have see a little bit of an indentation, like a little dimple down where the ladder back jacquard was stitch was picked up to start. You that will happen if your yarn is being held too tight. You can adjust it a little bit with the tip of a needle. Let's see the other side. Looks pretty good. You can see little itty bitty indentations there, but it's pretty unnoticeable and I do believe that that will come out with blocking. So let's look at the inside of the work. Let's turn this inside out. This is the area over our leaf design and you can see the ladder back jacquard here of the yellow being held to the back while the orange is worked on the front. The rest of the mitt the yellow is held, I mean the orange is held to the back while the yellow is to the front. Now when you first make these you'll notice that the stitch that you picked up will stay in its little column but over time these will spread out. And let me show you an example. This is another piece that I've used this technique on. It's a little swatch that I made for a pocket where I wanted to have a little area of stranded knitting in the middle. This is actually it's worked top down in the middle of a pocket. Some um, ribbing over here on the edge and then I wanted the whole background to be yellow. So how do you do that? You use ladder back to card and this is knit flat. So you can use it for knitting flat or in the round. You can see where I picked up the stitches here where I worked in the back of the pearl bumps. Let me use my pointer where I picked up in the back of a stitch and started this column up. You can see each one of these does not show through to the front of the work. Looks really nice. Now over time what happens is where this column of stitches is these will get wider and wider and wider until there's an equal distance between the legs of each one of the columns. See how wide this is up here? With use they will just get wider and wider so there's less opportunity to get your finger snagged under one of those and you can see uh, how it just creates a mesh that is totally separate from the front of the fabric. The same thing is going on here with the fingerless mitt we're creating this mesh is totally disconnected from the front of the fabric. So I'm going to do a few more rounds and finish off the little leaf motif and I'll be back here to show you how to connect these stitches at the top. I'll be right back. Okay we have now completed the little leaf design and I'm going to be getting rid of the ladder back jacquard stitches by knitting them together or SSK either knit two together or SSK with their neighbor. In this case I'm going to do an SSK but you can use whichever method you prefer. So let's make this bigger. So I'm going to work over to the first one until we're one stitch before here we are. Here's the ladder back jacquard stitch. So I'm just going to take this stitch and work it as an SSK with this stitch. Now the ladder back jacquard stitch is gone. We can remove this marker. We're not going to need it anymore. Work over to the next one which is this yellow stitch right here and this entire round is going to be worked in yellow. Let's see, it's not that one, it's this one right here. It's the orange, so we're going to do SSK, get rid of that. And we have one more over here. My yarn's getting tight. Work over to it. right here, SSK. Now all of those stitches are gone and we can continue in pattern to make the fingerless mitt 
and the color work portion of the uh, ladder back jacquard is completed. We can see those stitches now. See this one is completed right here. It was an SSK with that so that's no longer um, in use. And there's the netting. Here's the yellow. We worked it together here. The netting. The orange here. So it's all free. It's all done. Let's turn it right side out. I mean right side inside out. And we can see how it looks. So this is the back of the mitt. So the netting is not con uh, connected to the back of the mitt at all. And your fingers will not go through this. You can see how the stitches are spreading out. It will equalize over time. So there you go. That's how you do ladder back to card in the round. But you can use the same exact method to work flat as well. And it's often incorporated, as I said before, with stranded knitting. But you can do the jacquard by itself with or without the stranded knitting. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Share my videos with your friends. And come back and watch some more. Happy knitting.